You absolute aroma booze did it. You gave me freaking 15,000 likes in not even the first day, in the first eight, nine hours or something. It's insane. The video is at 20,000 likes right now. That is the most liked video I've ever had on my YouTube channel up until now. So honestly, guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for liking the video, for the support on the channel. It really means the world to me. And tell you what, we've done the Roman Empire today. And my apologies for being a little bit late with that. Um, I, 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 It's not normal to expect 15,000 likes in less than two freaking days, man. <laughs> but that being said, if we reach on uh, this video 20,000 likes in the first couple of days, that's gonna let me know that you guys want me to turn this into a world conquest and I will if I see those likes reached the second that I see it reached I will continue the save up until 1821 I don't know if I'll be able to get a world conquest done but we got a hundred absolutism we got a ton of admin efficiency we got what seven missionaries so I think we are armed with all the right weapons to attempt that world conquest as the Roman Empire and guys I dedicate this video to all of you this month is men's mental health awareness month and I think we all deserve a little bit of a break and just casually watch some Romanian dude living in Japan play as uh, the Byzantines into Roman Empire in a game made by a Swedish company I mean it's just it's just men things right guys we're men we're, we're not aliens spawned on planet Schmogadongs not not at all hey also don't forget to subscribe to the channel it would really help me out so much and encourage me to make more videos like these in the future so let's get into it finally we actually inherited Venice surprisingly the uh Pronoia of Venice died at the ripe young age of 70 freaking five man. Come on. Why did he live that long? <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> As consequence, we can do the Venetian Avarice mission that allows us to either destroy the development in Venice and just make it a really bad place to live, or we can uh, integrate it basically and it's going to allow us to build Gallius ships, the unique ships that the Venetians have, and we can build these Galliuses in the city of Venice without having a shipyard. So let's go over here and ships. Gallius, we can have up to 41 Galliuses right now. Let's, uh, let's build a few. I guess we can replace some of our regular galleys we do need a shipyard so not all of our provinces have a shipyard at the moment truce is over with uh, florence so let's attack florence as well since we're right next to them might as well before they join the coalition which right now is definitely a brewing we got most of france and south italy as well as what's left of uh, the italian peninsula that's not a part of us in that coalition looks like ethiopia the nation that released half of the mamluks uh, breakaways here is stopped proclaim guaranteeing them so I can attack. Unfortunately, Mamelux is bankrupt, so they're not going to help. I would have appreciated if they did help so I can lower the truce timer from uh, more years that I have to five years. That would have been pretty nice. Having the two holy cities will allow us to do another one of our missions. So let me send both of the armies to make this war a little bit faster. You know, I really feel like the uh, HRE should worry more about the French than they should worry about me because look at this. The French once more are at war with Austria, Hungary, Bremen and Brandenburg because they've attacked Holland in the conquest of Zealand. They are the bad guy here, clearly. Not me, okay? I'm just trying to bring peace and prosperity to the land. That's all. Yeah, in fact, I'm actually going to disband every single one of my uh, regular galleys since the uh, Venetian galleas has an extra 20% galley combat ability, making them significantly more efficient. I mean, I guess it, it's making them 20% more efficient, right? At the end of the day, it's literally in the title. Ah, yes, beautiful schnick in, uh, in the historical terms. This is what they used to call these. These were the famous uh, Roman schnicks whenever they expanded. You gotta say it with the sh in case you're wondering, not with the s. That's not how it works. Wait, what? The French took the island of, uh, what is this? Mallorca or something? Time to say goodbye to uh, your lands here, Florence. And congratulations, really, because now you are a part of the Roman Empire, so you're clearly way better off as it is now. That was really high difficulty development lands like holy snaps man in three provinces they got more development than Romania has in modern times just it's a joke please Romanian people don't attack me again you know what considering how I don't really need an ocean going fleet I'm just going to disband these and I know that I could have uh, sold the ships but I don't need to I'm making bank as it is I just had a freaking earthquake literally as we speak <laughs> 
Oh my god, man, living in Japan has its pros and cons. The earthquakes are very, very scary, not gonna lie there. Sometimes they can be pretty rough, especially when you're, you're you know, you're recording on the second floor of your house. Um, It can get pretty wobbly. I don't really want to fight the Ethiopians, but they're guaranteeing the independence of the Mamluks, and I cannot allow that, so I'm not co them, but I am am taking one province that I need to form the Roman Empire. That's it from Ethiopia, nothing else. So they're kind of getting away with it scot-free, as they say, uh, as they say in Ethiopia, really. Because, you know, they got a lot of Scottish people in Ethiopia. This is just common knowledge. Wait a second. Why is Ethiopia's capital in Halaib? What? That makes no freaking sense. Why would they change it to the three development province that doesn't even have their primary... Co what? Uh, okay. Okay. Oh wow, these guys are stubborn. I got their capital and they still don't want to give me just the one little province here. They would be very much so against this because we don't uh, we don't have enough war score. Never mind. That makes sense. You need at least 10 war score to demand stuff. So I guess we just got to take the fort in Mendeferuawa. Our cause is just aggressive expansion minus 20% till 72. Hot damn, that is my moment to expand uh, right there. Wait, why is Basra in the province of Katif, not in the province of Basra? Do they at least have the cores? Oh, they do have some cores. Oh, they are a culturally influenced state of Persia. That is definitely a new thing. If I haven't released my Persia video yet, I'm not going to spoil too much. But let's just say that Persia's uh, flavor is pretty freaking interesting. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to release the Persia video. Because right now, for some reason, people be asking me to release every single part of Byzantium continuously, okay? I'm not complaining, though. This is by far my most fun run in the 1.36. I mean... I'm having a lot of freaking fun doing this, guys. So I really appreciate all the support on this particular run. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Fred. Okay, let's try that again now. Still, you don't want to... Come on, Ethiopia. I've taken two of your forts. All I want is a single province. Oh, found out where the Mameluk troops are hiding. Uh, yeah. That's not going to help you, Mamluks. I'm going to wipe you out before I piece you out, of course. I want to get a little bit of army tradition, although we should be around 100 now. We're at 94.4. Yeah, we, we need to keep it at a cool... 100, so we got to take you out, Mamluks. Nothing personal, okay? Woo wait That was juicy. Oh, truce is over with Castile. Time to get our provinces for Aragon, our beloved Pronoyar. Uh, let's go ahead. Reconquest of Cor, Gerona, and do we call Bludre Portugal? I don't really think I want anything from them, and I don't want to be at war with the Brits, because I'm going to get an alliance with the Brits after to use them in my war against the French. Eh, need a new Generalis. This guy is semi-okay. I wish we had more uh, siege pips will fire pips not shock and maneuver attempt number three of piecing out the uh, ethiopia with uh, just uh, one province let's see if we get some money now as well a little bit of money how much could we get for 700 we could get okay buddy all right ethiopia time to uh, do a little bit of uh, carpetia siege because here because we need uh, all of that cash one by one they all fall to the power of the one true ring of uh of the of the roman empire we're we're basically the we're basically mortar right now yep i said it we are mortar boys. We're gonna be mortaring them all. <laughs> Sometimes I shock myself with the stupid things that I say. I, I really do. It only took a little bit of extra persuasion to take uh, to get what we needed from the Ethiopians. Glad we could do business, Ethiopia. And by business, I mean, you know. Thanks for the province, sucker. <laughs> normal people would likely just take money from uh, the Mamluks. But I'm not normal and I like to cancel cores, okay? It's not going to have any impact on anything, but I just, I just enjoy it canceling the course that's all it's something i lack to do all right let's core up everything mecca oh it's getting sieged by rebels let's uh get rid of said rebels now we can do the heart of islam mission that allows us two options convert the mosque into a church and we get a basilica in mecca as well as we can use the kaaba monument but we only benefit from religious unity and prestige or we get a local muslim pilgrimage until the end of the game with flat 60 ducats tax holy shit that is over powered <laughs> i'm gonna go for the second one of course brother brother 60 tax flat okay we got to get rid of the rebels and then we'll see how much we're making from that province right there oh and we can also restore the cradle of gold get one building in medina and five production so we just need to develop this a little bit more and we need to get a building uh i don't know anything is fine let's make this a full core as well we have Shnokos. encourage development little bitty witty boom boom and now we can do that mission after the building is done plus with the conquest of 
of the uh, Holy Lands there in Mecca, Medina, we get one more missionary from the conquest of Mecca itself. Holy mother, look at that difference. 4.8 morale compared to their 3.5 and they got less discipline than me as well. That is a slaughter fest right there. And despite being outnumbered, I'm still gonna try and relieve the siege in Tafilal. I'm fairly confident we can win. Oh, we actually got some reinforcements from our vassals. So that is Glucci von Strucci. They should not be able to retreat much. So we should be able to wipe out half of their army here in the Moroccan lands because we took the forts that allowed them to retreat back into the uh, Iberian Peninsula. That's gonna be it for the Portuguese and the Castilian armies here now. Oh, they retreated one more time. Never mind. We gotta chase them a bit more. We did take Toledo though. So let's go ahead and uh, go towards Malaga. Once we have uh, Leon and Malaga, we've got all the fortifications. Oh, actually, no, they built another fort in Almeria. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say we got all the fortifications, but clearly that is not the truth right there. And we can also restore the cradle of gold now in Medina. It will be producing gold, but it does have a little bit of a debuff here. The Macht Acht Debab which gives depletion chance plus 20%. So yeah, we're gonna have to be a little bit careful not to get this gold mine depleted. We cored up all the provinces we got from the Mamluks and we also wiped out what's left of the Portuguese army. Take note guys, something that I know most of you watching already know, but probably some of you might not know. Your core creation cost also reduces the time for coring up cores. So if you have a lot of core creation costs, it's gonna take very little time to core up the provinces you've taken. And we've got the fort in Leon. I guess you could say that we're uh, professionals at taking the fort in Leon, eh? Eh? <laughs> Yep, I'm from the 90s, that's true. I'm pretty sure that in every single part of this particular run, I've had multiple 78 plus percent sieges. I mean, at this point, it's a staple. I might as well just make the thumbnail with this bastard over here in the forefront of it. Also time to revenge the last uh, attack on the Austrians where we couldn't take the provinces we wanted to take. This time they're also at war with the French, but I'll let the French enforce their demands before I start attacking since I'm busy in the Castilian front now anyway. Anyway, let's start moving our troopers into this area though. We got two armies we can uh, use for the Austrian front. Can we? We have three? No, no, only two. Actually, this army's not doing anything. Maybe I should send these guys over to Austria too. Okay, this time we were lucky and we managed to get these provinces. We we got these in the last war against Austria and we still managed to lose them, but I am going to keep an eye on them so I don't lose my vital interest provinces here again. And let's do the peace deal. We're going to give directly Herona to uh, Aragon and then we're going to just return the rest of these provinces to them unfortunately the french took the island here so that's pretty annoying but i mean it is what it is sadly okay we can also give ibiza and menorca directly i cannot return it because they're occupied right now but uh we still can do this so it's fine because we don't get the extra aggressive expansion then and i'm gonna take the southern bits directly including mercia since i can connect the coastline with my vassals lands by taking mercia and of course the uh granadan bits because we have the uh, famous alhambra here that's gonna give us 5% extra admin efficiency, meaning it's going to be a lot faster for us expanding. Not going to lower the war exhaustion because I don't care about the extra coring cost since um, it's not a big deal. And I forgot to um, do that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this then. I'm going to use some of my manpower to finish this monument basically instantly. And now we can also core up this province. There you go. That's just big brain right there, boys. Massive brain, even some would say. Avec le stecken va room against Austria's only remaining army. <laughs> Yeah. And we just unlocked military tech 14, meaning we got access to the better cavalry units. Not only am I pissed about the 85% on Monferrato, I'm also pissed because I didn't realize that they would join on the side of the Austrians and I was literally five relations away from diplo vassalizing them. I didn't use my core from uh, Savoy because they're a part of the HRE and the war would have uh, dragged in a lot more nations that I would have been comfortable with uh, having dragged in. They're a free city in the HRE even, not even just a regular one that is um pretty impressive not gonna lie they definitely went up in the world didn't they but now now they're going down in the world because they're getting a fully yes annexationist boys <laughs> and i'm also gonna start a war against russia calling the commonwealth to get some help because uh i want to give back my provinces to the great horde so i can start integrating them afterwards uh where's my army at there you go 
to actually push for this. I probably should have waited before calling them in because they might have some units closer. No, actually they don't. Most of their units are in the eastern front or better yet western front. So I should have time to get these provinces before they do. We got to get one, two, three, four, five provinces from them. And actually the Commonwealth has two provinces from my vassal. Huh, 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 huh. That means we can probably use return core province and get these two given back to the Great Horde without uh, any losses because we got 86 favors. So we're going to do that after the war if we remember fingers crossed i don't forget this <laughs> i i forget this a lot hey uh commonwealth you want some mosaics brother you you want some mosaics looks like you do want some bro 92 percent really land shit i am swimming in money right now i'm also upgrading the monuments because for example the mausoleum of calicarnassus gives up 10 percent more average monarch life spam it used to be more i think it used to be like 25 percent more or something like that but honestly it's really really broken like i remember i did a run before as uh Epirus, and i had one of my monarchs live up to 90 something years which is ridiculous because i also use the special flavor that Epirus gets towards getting those uh extra old monarchs plus the theocratic one the mission tree and so on so it added up a lot of uh, modifiers i was thinking of doing another epirus run where we can try and get 100 plus year old uh, leaders as them as the main topic of the video that would be pretty cool to watch hey we got one more missionary and the achievement because we've converted the city of rome to orthodoxy finally i i left these guys on automatically to do it and they left it for the last city because it was i guess a little bit more expensive i don't know or at least I guess it took longer to convert it. I, I have no idea. But now, most of our provinces are orthodox. And I haven't needed to even check the religious screen for the entirety of the playthrough. So the autonomous missionaries is way better than I ever expected it to be. I like the fact that the entirety of the Feher state here is required to uh, form the Roman Empire. Or better yet, is a part of the provinces that you should be getting in order to form the Roman Empire. Because technically, this was a part of the Roman Empire for a very long time the pannonian region or the province of pannonia was one of the most fertile areas of the roman empire and a lot of uh, farming happened here it was a very strategic region for the romans to have in the uh, northern balkans i guess you could call it i don't know if we can call it balkans really i also tactically did not destroy the uh, pretender rebels that the hungarians had because maybe just so maybe they might enforce and then hungary becomes an independent nation i i'd be down to see that really i don't really feel like i want to take any provinces from uh, the Muscovites myself. I'm just going to give this back to my uh, beloved vassal of the Great Horde. I'm going to cancel their guarantee on Genoa so I can attack Genoa once, I, uh, once I'm ready for it because they're a part of the coalition now. So I got to dissipate the coalition or just attack the coalition. One of the two, right? Or wait until they leave the coalition. That works too. Could do trade power, but I don't think I want that. Maybe the money, I guess. Mongolia. What? They actually managed to reach these lands? Oh my god. That's... This is Russia. No. No shot, dude. No actual... F they have gone all the way to the Pacific. What the if? You know what? Just for the memes, I'm going to release Yaroslav. I don't really need to. I'm not going to vassalize him. I don't care. I'm just doing it because it's going to be an extra Orthodox nation around here. And it's just, you know, a way of pissing off Russia and uh, and cutting that name on the map, making it uh, look even weirder now. There you go. Even Northerner now, better yet. Since we core this up, let's uh, upgrade the monument to level one so that we can get the institution spread. That should help throughout the entirety of the campaign and as it stands right now Yemen owns the other half of the Iberian uh, Peninsula because Dawasir and the other guys here have become their vassals and Mamluks exist in two provinces with cores on everybody so if somebody's uh, sneaky they can vassalize Mamluks and uh, have a ton of reconquest CBs against me which let's face it is not gonna happen because it is single player not multiplayer hey what the F just happened here Parma and Switzerland ate most of M Milan Oh, 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 hello, everybody. We got a new vassal in town. Yep, that's right. I'm going to vassalize Milan now. That's the logical thing to do here. I nearly forgot to return my course from uh, the Commonwealth, but I remembered. I, I definitely remembered just now. Better better late than never, right? Uh, Yeah, I was about to declare another war, so this would have uh, completely destroyed all chances of me uh, returning this eventually. Speaking of, we also need to start annexing the uh, Great Horde. Let's do it now bro 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 oh my god dude <laughs> <laughs> they literally rivaled me a week before I returned the last core in Bakhmut. Come on, man. What is this freaking RNG? Like, actually, 
<laughs> my only remaining ally rivals the schnapps out of me. You know what? Feelings mutual, bish. I'm gonna make you my little rival then, huh? You happy about that? <laughs> All right, Asukra, nothing personal, but I'm gonna be concentrating your lands here because I want to integrate you a little bit faster. 50 admin power. How much can we stack up? We can stack up to 1,400. Let's also upgrade these that we can upgrade now so that um we can... I don't want either of these upgraded, actually. I want to upgrade because you can only have a limited amount of level three centers of trade based on the amount of merchants that you have. So right now we can have up to five. And as such, I want to upgrade the ones in Italy to level three to get more out of them, essentially. I need to make this a full state, but I need to lower my governing capacity right now a little bit more before I do so. So I guess it's time to build more courthouses. I stopped building for a second, but yeah, you just got to keep on pumping these bad boys. In the wise words of the famous uh, Shkobi Dobbs of uh, Aragon, we are now one. That's right. I just invented a famous person. You got a problem with that? Take it up with the famous person I just invented. Okay, get out of my face. But yeah, we just uh, integrated a massive amount of development land here. We got like what? Two, three hundred almost development because they've been deving like crazy these lands too for free without having to even stress. I'm going to delete this unit here. It's just annoying. Oh, that's an artillery piece too. Okay, sure. And we got the truce done with the Milanese. So now we can attack them and they allied Naples. Oh, we baby. Okay, well, we are going to be getting even more lands in Italy because we're going to fully annex these bad boys if we can. We cannot. Are you kidding me right now, brother? Ah, uh, they developed like crazy, didn't they? Yep. 22 times developed in Naples, 15 in Salento, and 12 in Avellino. Bro, <laughs> bro, come on, man. The AI really loves to develop their land so much in the mid to late campaign. It's insane. Uh, now, that being said, it's fine. This gives us the chance to get them out of the coalition for First and foremost and we can cancel the alliance they have with the French so when the truce is over I'll keep an eye on that we can fully annex them in the second war against them I guess most are culturally converting all of North Africa and essentially the cheaper areas of the world that I own of course because um I don't want to accept all of those cultures I just want to make everybody Greek and then turn them all to Roman once we form the Roman Empire hmm are we gonna be wasting mana points by doing this or I'm getting a lot of mana points right now so it's not a big deal I went from getting no admin to having more admin than anything else it's just the game has just been a roller coaster i'll be totally honest a massive roller coaster but now that i think about it probably shouldn't have done that because my heir which is going to come to play soon because this guy's 67 has three mana so i'd be losing a good two mana then mm, let's see it's extremely cheap for us to core everything so it doesn't make much of a difference realistically speaking we got so much support actually from uh, our parliament i only needed to convince two different seats that's it everybody else was already on board with us now vassalizing milan of course is a little bit less aggressive expansion but i'm actually going to annex them fully because they have a lot of aggressive expansion with me so by annexing them what we can do next is we can release them from the same province and now they absolutely love us look at that they got plus 60 relations with us and i'm not sure if they were a republic before or not but they are a duchy so we can turn them into a pronoia as well now because you can not turn republics in pronoia yeah, just keep that in mind holy shit dude this is the first good freaking air i get i'm gonna call this guy chaticus maximus the first holy mother bro 566 this man's gonna have so many accidents it's insane i don't think he's gonna reach the ripe age of 15 i highly doubt he does but if he does i'm gonna abdicate and i'm gonna let him take over charge holy mother we're getting six thousand ducats from selling crownlands now yeah that's that seems like a lot of money doesn't it guess we can also accept the printing press i haven't actually taken it for a while because i was using it to bank more admin points uh i'm sorry what royal marriage from russia didn't i just uh you know attack you russia holy shit this okay buddy all right i see what's up they want to be my bestest of friends you know what i don't mind i don't mind i don't really want to expand in the east much and they can keep their stuff and i might use them against the commonwealth and other nations in europe so sure uh, do I have the Diplo slots for it? Sure, I got them. Let's let's get the Royal Marriage. Maybe we can even put our leadership on the throne of Russia and then get a PU over them if we're lucky with RNG a little bit. Let's see. Oh, and you guys want to see the actual difference between my units and theirs? Check it out. 6.0 morale of armies compared to 3.5. Um, I feel like we might have a little bit more morale than them. What do you guys think? They're still on tech 15, 14, sorry. We are already at 15, boys. 
So we got the big juice. We got the big, big juice right here. I bet Naples was just about to click the join coalition button, but I'm faster than you, Naples. I'm much faster, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. I could get more money if I didn't cancel the course. Well, you know what? I don't care, all right? For me, canceling the course is priceless, all right? Priceless. That's what I'm telling you now. Does it have any tactical advantage? No, but I can cancel the core and I want to cancel and it's my core to cancel, all right? It's my fetish. There, you have it. You have the the truth now i got a core fetish so most people have you know like a border gore fetish i got a core fetish it is what it is deal with it now i gotta be really careful with portugal whenever i get the truce finish with them i have to attack them again because i can fully annex and whenever i do fully annex all of their colonies are going to become my colonies meaning i'm going to get brazil argentina the caribbeans and so on for free without having to actually attack them now that being said we do have 164 overextension here so uh <laughs> we got we gotta we gotta take care of that and we gotta also be mindful of our truce timers 82 with 81 here and i f think i might have forgotten one truce timer but yeah these are the main ones since i want to be taking the cores back from switzerland and i want to continue my expansion into castile same tactic as with portugal we want to fully annex so we get all of their colonies too in the new world and we need to continue to upgrade the uh, monument in alhambra to get it to level three to facilitate our expansion a little bit we're actually stack wiping units to left and right because of our technological difference here and because we got freaking six morale of armies boys <laughs> absolutely insane amount of morale right there the first good rng in this entire freaking part of the playthrough i guess is the fact that the french have proclaimed guaranteed the castilians so now when i attack the castilians i'm gonna be at war with the french and that way the french being the biggest member in the coalition it's gonna help dissipate the coalition afterwards meaning everybody that's around here is gonna leave it and i'm gonna be able to attack whoever left the coalition easily that does mean we're gonna have a pretty tough war here though because it's castile austria and france the biggest nations in central and western europe so let's set up uh, cordoba i think as the main target yep there you go and let's glucci von strucci we need to bring our troops over here and we're gonna get access of the straits we already have both sides so unless somebody occupies one side of this we will of course be able to cross in between whenever we want to we do need more units for that front so i'm gonna have to end some of the other fronts including this one i need to enforce my religion on thuringia can i do that now nope i gotta wait a little bit until i take their capital then after we can do a white piece or sorry not a white piece get some money from um, the commonwealth and that's it i only did the war against the commonwealth because i knew they would join a coalition against me because the truce was over and they have 82 minus on the aggressive expansion bit so it was a preemptive strike let's say to not get all of europe at the same time in a coalition against me because then that would have been pretty bad you ever want to find out how strong the galleuses are well we wiped out the entirety of their freaking fleet including 12 heavies and 12 regular galleys with 41 galleuses so yeah that's uh they're pretty strong i'd say oh we can finally do belisarius's foe which allows us to get a general with 80 tradition and guaranteed certain pips so we can go for example for the shock and fire guy or shock and maneuver i'm gonna go for whoever has more fire in siege None of them have fire and siege. I guess shock and fire is fine. Plus, we get for recovering western flank permanent modifier, an extra 10% reduction for stability cost, and extra missionary strength versus heretics. And we can now do Justinian's ambition, Aleia Yaktaist. It allows us the decision to change the name to the Eastern Roman Empire, as well as five permanent power projection and the conqueror trait is going to be a lot more predominant and we're going to get it a lot more often. Now, Justinian's empire here, because we have the province is what we need we click yes and now our name is the eastern roman empire just like it should have been from the start of the campaign because the byzantines never called themselves byzantines in fact in fact they called themselves the roman empire not even eastern just simple roman empire we've got the bare minimum to peace out the french and we're gonna get it because we're gonna release from these two provinces here the nations of toulouse as well as uh provence check it out provence has 12 provinces that they have cores on in france and toulouse has another six if i'm not mistaken yeah i think six provinces so essentially we're getting 30 percent of france in the next war and we're taking one province to release uh gascony as well and some more vassals in the north including champagne which has a ton of cores in the northern bits of france meaning that we're expanding in france without getting too much aggressive expansion in the process and we're quickly integrating because we're making all of these bad boys our pronoyers return to the past 
allows us to either make Rome our new capital, and this is also going to give Constantinople provincial governing cost minus 100%, meaning it's as if it would be our main capital, or we can make Rome the secondary capital, get more development in Constantinople, as well as some extra bonuses there. Reality is that it's all about what kind of a playthrough you want to have. Moving your capital to Rome gives you movement speed and uh, some military bonuses in the form of extra leaders without upkeep. Keeping it in Constantinople gives a little bit more dev distribution, not just a military one, and it gives reform progress. I don't care about the movement speed as much, so I'm going to keep it in Constantinople because I also want to get uh, the other mission done where we need to have 50 development in Constantinople that we achieved already. And what else did we need actually? Oh, my bad. It's 65 development that we need and 10 buildings. I just realized there's still missions I haven't done like uh, get 20 development in these three provinces and then we get there. The event growing foreign demand for silk. I'm assuming it's going to turn these provinces to silk trade good as well as we get production and a few other things upgraded to counting house. Okay, this is actually worth it. You know what? I'm, uh, I'm going to develop this and do this. I'm going to do the rest of the missions that I haven't really been focusing on actually. The mission Mendes Schism is essentially going to convert everybody to Orthodox if they've got good relations with me. So right now, most nations don't love me. I'm going to improve relations and I'm going to wait before I click that mission so that when I do click it, most nations will choose over to uh, become Orthodox, not just a few. I hope in uh, the future when they release new DLCs, they're going to redo the age bonuses because some of them are so underwhelming. Like right now, I'm not making use of any of these except the religious wars and even the trade power. That's it. The other ones, at average, if you ask me. And I know, Ludi, what a great way to express yourself. That is very, very professional when talking about these. I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Yes, it's... Uh, I was educated at the uh, professionalism uh, school of uh, Galat. We're very professional there. I am very satisfied with this particular deal here. So let's bring our diplomat back. Of course, we'll be releasing Leon from Placencia since they also have a ton of cores all around here. Check it out, boyos, with the funk so brother. We got four, five more cores we can get and all of them are pretty high development. Let's go ahead and release all of these vassals before I forget to do so. I've been known to forget a few times. Woo-wee! So excited to get my cores back for my vassals. That's gonna be a pretty delicious payback moment right there. Let's also get 6,000 ducats. Why not, right? Since it's given away for free to us, essentially. Okay, boys, a little bit of development and we've uh, grown some... S oh, actually, the price of silk increases. We don't get silk in um, those provinces. Oh, no, we do, we do. Silk produced in Achaea. Yes, <laughs> there you go. We get both of those things. So um, that's really, really good. Silk is a really expensive trade good as it is. So now with it increased by 20%, it's even better. And it upgraded to counting houses from workshops, which means, oh my God, if I did this early in the campaign, I would have gotten absolute freaking bank. I should have paid attention. I didn't, I forgot. I honestly forgot about that mission. It's still good. We're still making even more money now. But yeah, this would have been amazing in the 1400s. Oh, we can also get the sea fire because we built 50 galleys this is going to give until the end of the game galley combat ability plus 10 and if we have the largest navy in the world which we do we also get for 20 years trade efficiency and a few other things now that means we essentially have plus 30 galley combat ability because we got the plus 20 from uh, having all of our galleys galleasses and as i was saying earlier they've started leaving the coalition now and this is my moment to basically wipe out everybody around me there you go my minions leave <laughs> Leaves a collision and oh, that is delicious. Oh my god, you have made the biggest mistake ever, people. <laughs> First one we're gonna attack is, of course, Aziza, guys, because we need to take it for Milano. Let's check our coalition map mode. Yep, nobody left in it. Absolutely no bloody. Actually, no, Ansbach's still in it. Oh, really, Ansbach? Out of all the people? Come on, bro. Wait, what? Oh, no, I forgot to join. Oh, my God, I knew I forgot something, dude. Oh, the freaking League War just triggered. Ah, uh, okay. Well, obviously, the Protestants are gonna lose. They've got nobody important, and these guys have Castile and Austria. You know, I never realized, but the uh, the palace over here is not too bad. Global plus two missionary strength, as well as harsh treatment cost reduction for later down the line. Really not bad whatsoever. Overall, I have to say that uh, the French is kind of where I met my match. Their units are basically on par with my units, and they got 160,000 still after so many battles. Luckily, whilst they focused on sieging down all of Iberia, I sieged down their homeland, so economically they're collapsed 
collapsing really fast and it's starting to show which is why i'm basically on my way to winning this in just a few more months well actually it might take a little bit longer i just realized they have quite a few forts in the netherlands area i'm not going to give up until i get a hundred percent war score in this war and i also want to take the province of salon so i can actually release burgundy as my next pronoia so in the next war i get basically half of freaking france or actually i cannot reach salon so i gotta take uh, french conte it's fine french conte is not too bad too yeah 99 is gonna be needed we're actually close 123 135 so if we just siege a few more provinces we should be a-okay this year is exactly what i was saying they've got 6.1 i've got 6.1 we are really on par 115 discipline with 115 discipline it's just a matter of who's got more troops that's why i've lost a significant amount of units in this war compared to pretty much any other war i've had in this entire playthrough all right now they're willing to give us what we want let's do the peace deal now of course we didn't take everything but in the next war we will take the rest of uh, the burgundian lands which is quite a lot of them i think one more province is needed for provence and two or three more provinces for uh, toulouse as well i also love the fact that pronoyas do not take diplo relation slots so even though we have four massive pronoyas we're still able to get two more allies if we want to get oh no our leader has passed away and chadicus maximus palaiologos is the new emperor with uh patheticus Trojanos over here continuing the legacy but yeah we're probably gonna get rid of him let's face it he's uh he's not gonna be around for too much longer don't worry about it now that being said chadicus maximus is 24 so he is gonna be the emperor when we restore the roman empire that's for sure i am gonna do a little bit of a detour here and i'm going to um attack the persians to take the iraqi lands and a few more areas to consolidate my eastern flank make it easier for me to defend this eastern flank later down the line we're starting right now perhaps the biggest war of the session we're going to be attacking the uh, castilians calling in great britain and we're fighting the french we're going to cobligerate the austrians which is going to drag in the commonwealth we're going to cobligerate trent and so on we're going to be conquering a huge amount of land so we're going to be taking both austrian lands genoese lands castilian lands and we're going to do a very quick white piece with the french so we can attack them in five years once the priest is over that's why i put my troops mostly by the border with the french so i can quickly attack and piece them out asap since they are the only one that i did not co belligerate in this war only one of the ones that i have interest in taking land from in any case to be fair the commonwealth also i have no interest in taking anything from them right now which is why i didn't co belligerate them so i'm just gonna rush for their capital to white piece them as well no need to fight these battles and drag on the wars if we're not gonna have any actual objectives or anything that we like to get from these countries right always remember this because i've seen a lot of people what they do is they get so involved in a war and they lose so many troops they invest so much economy but the reality is they don't want to take land from that country or they cannot or staying in the war overall is not as beneficial as piecing out and fixing your economy or doing other wars that are more important remember that don't get dragged into wars you don't want to be in and if you do get dragged in don't stay in them for too long quality ai leaving their capital city as a level one fort still amazing 44 52 almost there almost there we probably can get it in a few moments even closer 47 40 oh there you go that's it 47 46 white to pcs get out of here france we got fish to fry in in spain because you know that's where all the fish are from so we gotta fry them 45 50 so if we take the uh, the fortification in poznan we're good or even kovno actually is probably easier to take it's a level two fort and it's in uh, grasslands or we just took georgia is that enough no 48 50 really georgia is not even worth two points what's going on in the balkans yep as expected they siege the schnapps out of everything in the balkans but it's all good because half of this is uh sieged by hungary and commonwealth so once i piece them out we'll be fine we did finish off uh, the uh, castilian so let's uh, send some of our units to siege the austrian parts we haven't yet attacked austria unfortunately the portuguese lost their colonies well actually they got the event so essentially brazil gained the pu over portugal which then they lost because of pretender rebels and brazil kept all of the other colonies as their colonies so no colonies for me unfortunately at least not from the portuguese i'll get the ones from the castilian can we take a little bit of money from them we oh my god how much money they can give us 2900 oh boy not gonna waste my time here though let's get out of here because we make a lot more money than that monthly and let's bring our troops back so we can attack the hungarians and the austrians now no oh dude we just inherited provence that sucks they still had verdun and what else did they have and savoie verdun and savoie that's like 26 development oh man well, that sucks. That's that's one thing I don't
don't I'm not a big fan of like whenever you want your uh, pronoia to stick around they get integrated whenever you don't want them to stick around they stick around for freaking ages oh man ostrich just doubled in size because they inherited the throne of freaking Hungary I need to take uh, this here from them essentially since these are rightful Roman clay I was hoping by fully annexing them though I'd get hungry for free but they inherited so now I'm not getting anything for free unfortunately I also don't feel like I need the rest of the provinces from Genoa I'm just taking the ones they have in Italy and I'm taking a connection here between Theodosia and uh, Tamarta and that alone is 110 over extension are you kidding me bro come on how is every single province so high freaking development already in 1600 I'm curious do you guys think this here is a, a big coalition or a small coalition at least from your game experience because I personally think this is a really small coalition since it only includes two actual strong nations the Commonwealth and France and I'm truce dodging with both of them so the second that they come out of a truce with me I'm attacking them so they cannot join the coalition so it's only the HRE HRE together is not really much of an issue for me but that's just me I'm curious what you think what from your experience from playing the game if you feel like this is oh it's a lot or it's very few or whatever you know let me know in the comments and look how easy it is to core everything now this is just ridiculous look at that <laughs> freaking vienna cored for 27 admin points because we have minus 80 percent coring cost in this land bro this is just ridiculous right now <laughs> i'm loving it another day another war against the french let's go with the reconquest of toulouse's core and viva Ray as the main war target but obviously we're gonna give uh, all of uh, burgundy shit back as well since we need all of those provinces right oh these slimy scumbags these are french separatists so the french army is uh basically on the same side as them well that's fine we'll take care of everybody there not to fear the coalition also started triggering again so we're gonna need to be a little bit careful but like like before it's literally just uh, central europe nobody to be worried about really two more provinces needed in castile and then we've uh, finished the unification of the iberian parts or restoration of roman rule in iberia better yet hey gotcha bitch i always wanted to say that and in fact i say that a lot when i'm not recording i do record it but i usually cut it out because i know the youtube algorithm doesn't like bad words but it's always good to say it you know when you when you capture that enemy trooper just trying to sneak past your units oh it's good it's a good feeling. Oh, I forgot to click the mission non plus ultra because we got the provinces in Iberia, meaning we will be getting morale of navies prestige, but most importantly, until the end of the game, war score versus other religions. So we can take more shit from the French now. I kind of forgot about my Persian war. I declared on them so I uh, prevent them from joining the coalition, right? Because the truce finished and I just let them do whatever they wanted. They actually siege quite a big chunk of my land, so I need to take that back and push them out. I'm almost done with the French war. It's literally taking taking me five times longer to siege down Damascus compared to the time it took Persia to siege it down and it's giving them the time to actually do a lot of damage now. It's actually a lot less provinces than I was expecting to get from uh, this war but mm, it's better than nothing. Let's go ahead. Uh, now we can actually integrate Toulouse as in this guy. Holy shit he said. What is up with my freaking Pronoyars reaching the age of 70 plus? All of them man. Come on. How about this guy? How old is he? He's 62. So this guy I don't necessarily want him to die but he probably will reality is that i still have like four provinces i can give burgundy from the french and i'm gonna release uh, gascony and uh, Brittany once uh i finish my war with the persians speaking of let's actually focus on that front now because i pretty much ignored it all right persia papa Ludi's back in town and it's time to clean your bottoms all right we're, we're gonna wipe you out boys we're gonna wipe you out burgundy managed to get thirty thousand units okay i'm impressed oh no never mind it's burgundy and toulouse in the same spot never mind i really just want to get these lands in uh, iraq for kind of historical borders and this province here so i can connect my two regions maybe a little bit of money too that's about it don't really care much uh, about the uh, persians oh no oh no 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 oh i wasted military points oh that is bad i hate wasting points man i always need to be careful with this let me release uh, gascony and Brittany before i forget to do it and check it out if we go to diplomat mode that is quite a lot of provinces with super high 
development same here some of these are insanely high development they've been properly improving the provinces both in Brittany and in the southern bits of France bro I swear oh my god I, I knew this was gonna happen I knew it we inherited Burgundy but there's more this motherfucker is 76 years old and he didn't die the dude in Burgundy was 63 or some shit come on to lose can you just lose for once eh eh <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa I'll, I'll stop. I'm on fire. I know I'm on fire right now. Probably should have said, can you try to lose for one? Yeah, yeah, ah, I, I missed. I, I, the opportunity has passed. You don't want to know how old this asshole went to. Like, you really don't want to know how old he was when we inherited to lose. <sighs> This game sometimes, man. Now, in between my uh, rest periods, essentially between uh, the truce finishing with the French, the Castilians, and so on, what I'm doing is I'm fixing my economy as well as I'm trying to do the rest of the missions. I've also added a lot of uh, new trade companies, so I got a few more merchants now. We went up to 10. We can get extra three more merchants, actually, from trade companies. I don't need them right now. I'll get them in a while, though. But I did do something. I uh, filtered in and stopped a lot of trade in Valencia because the second Genoese node that I had was getting 150 ducats compared to 108 that the Constantinople node was getting and I needed the Constantinople node to get 100 and be the highest trade node in the world to do this mission so now we're gonna get 8,000 ducats naval reformer from now on will give us 3% global trade power per level so up to 15% and 200 government reform progress because we've taken the Laesio Enormis reform but we also can do the mega Megalopolis now, which gives some absolutely massive bonuses here, as well as max absolutism, reduction of advisor cost, goods produced, and so on. And whenever we reach 75 development, the, the uh, bonuses double. What's our development now? 65. We can get 75 by just concentrating within Constantinople fairly easily, if you ask me. In order to do return to gold, we just need to build uh, the workshop in Trebizond, which apparently we didn't have. So I'm building it now. Once that's done, we can get another two years worth of trade income which is a huge amount by the way but that being said let's uh, fix our trade uh, let's stop uh, sending this guy over here we don't want him to be here at all actually we want this to filter into Genoa instead we're gonna bring him over here and we're gonna assign him so he can uh, transfer trade towards Valencia well towards Sevilla which we own 90% of and then it gets transferred to Valencia and Genoa so we make absolutely insane amount of money from the Genoese node and I got one extra merchant so I can assign him in the uh, Caribbean most of the Caribbean node is actually uh, filtering into Chesapeake which goes into the English Channel so by getting a merchant here we can bring it again towards the Sevilla node which right now is getting 17 but I'm fairly confident we can get it up to 20 20 plus moment of truth lads let's see how much two years worth of income trade income al alone is for us that would be a 13 freaking thousand right now holy mother I, I, that's quite a little bit of money that's quite a little bit of money I know we could do better I'm just I'm not min-max to be honest as much as I should be uh, shake my head man I really I have to go all around the world to get a hundred percent score on the Castilians because they apparently went full-on colonial and freaking Asia boys but hey, it's worth it holy mother only two mana points to core this come on dude that is ridiculous <laughs> That is so freaking cheap. It's insane. We only have very little absolutism. We got 22 with the maximum of 40. So we're going to change the strength and parliamentarism, for example, which is going to lower the dev cost uh, bonus, but it's fine. Without that particular reform, we have a cap of 60. So once we reach 50, we can trigger the court and country disaster. That's going to give us another 20 going up to 80. And then we just have to cancel a few more privileges and we are absolutely golden. Speaking of, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of money over here shall we there you go that's uh gonna come in handy i guess it's time to uh march towards la march <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know it's pronounced La Mache. La Mache, La Mache, La Mache Bush. I might have digressed a little bit there more than I should have. But I still think marching towards La Marche is funny, okay? It's, it's goddammit, it's funny, I said. And yes, I'm saying that all by myself in my little room here at 3 a.m. in the morning. But that's beside from the point. Oh, no, in France, did I just to wipe out all your people? The uh, AI has a tendency of having a lot more artillery than they have infantry. Don't get me wrong, it's good to have a lot of artillery, right? But you also need to have the uh, 
get infantry to back it up. Otherwise, this happens. They deal some damage to me, but I still end up wiping them out because they don't have enough units to fill up their ranks. Wait, what? Russian crusade against Blackfoot. Oh my lord, Russia's in the new world. And not only that, but Blackfoot's actually winning that war. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a shameful display right there, Russia. And I'm not saying it's bad to be getting your ass kicked by the natives, but, uh, you know. Holy snap, look at that. Six mana points to convert other cultures to my culture. That is, of course, because we've uh, finished our religious ideas and we also have the policy here. Well, this one here that gives another minus 15 culture conversion cost. It can go lower than this, to be fair. Okay, war is done. Now, uh, let's get a lot of provinces from them so that we're even closer to restoring the Roman Empire. I just need a few more provinces. I'm actually going to attack my former ally of the British because they also have uh, provinces that I need to form the Roman Empire. So it's really nothing personal, Brits. It's it's really nothing personal at all. Ah, nice. We already established ourselves with the bigger fleet BBs here. Well, technically, we destroyed one of their trade fleets. Their actual fleet might have uh, a lot of heavies. Let's see. What kind of uh, navy we got over there, sir? War enemies. And they got 39 heavies. Okay. Uh, I need to land really fast. <laughs> okay. We got a little bit of a beachhead. Let's bring in more units before they puddle over and they attack us with the 100,000 that they have. Likely not all of those are on the actual island though. Okay, we got that. So now it's going to be a lot easier to just embark these bad boys on the ships. It's essentially instantaneous now. All right, 150,000 brave souls in the first invasion of the British Isles since those uh, ancient Caesarian times, let's say. Are they actually allied to anybody? Bremen and Hamburg. Okay, we can do that. This way we get uh, Bremen and Hamburg out of the coalition against us, I guess. Yeah, no, they actually have almost no units on the island. So this war is going to be super fast. They did land some units, so that's pretty cool to see okay looks like we're gonna have a pretty big battle 6.2 morale against 5.6 and we have the same actual discipline 112.1 and they got the same 112 well they got 111.7 actually nice try britain nice try they did tactically retreat so good to see that the ai at least has some tactical knowledge ireland famous last holdout of the british empire it's okay british people we're gonna bring you actual food instead of you know chinese food i'm just messing i know you guys have that delicious fish and chips. I see you, Britain trooper. I know what you did last summer. You did your cousin in Louisiana, didn't you? Disgust me. I'm sorry, too soon? Too soon? My bad. My bad. This is essentially reverse last of the Mohican right here. This is a last of the Edward. La last last Henry? I don't know. What's a really typical British name? Oh, I know. Uh, last Ahmed. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to get canceled for some of these jokes one day. <laughs> I can feel it. All right. Let's go with the Pisces de Luz. There you go. Now, let's core up all of these provinces as well. Whilst we're at it. Boom, shaka locos. We just need one more word to grab the rest of that. Oh, and now we can use the uh, Defender of the Faith. Sorry, Cleansing of heresy with 75% aggressive expansion as if that would matter at this point. I mean, I got look at my aggressive expansion map mode. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all of Europe hates my guts, but uh, surprisingly nobody outside of Europe gives a schnapps about me So maybe it's a hint that I should wipe out all of Europe. Maybe just saying kick Should we rebuild the hexamillion wall and the Theodosian wall? <laughs> the most useless of freaking constructions. I'm gonna build them screw it I'm gonna build them just for the memes. I don't really need them, but I got too much money Don't know what to do with it really. Oh, yes, baby Give me that juicy absolutism from uh, harsh treating you boys this monument here is actually going to come in massive handy once it's uh, fully upgraded. Harsh treatment is going to be 33% cheaper, so I'm going to get absolutism a lot faster as consequence. Oh, and I just noticed something super stupid. Britain and France are guaranteeing the independence of Castile, so if I attack them and my truce is over in a couple of months in December, then I reduce my truce time with the British and the French from 15 years to 5. Hell yeah! Essentially, we can reform the Roman Empire without having to do any truce breaks, and we can do it super fast and i've improved enough relations with the nations that i needed to improve with so oh look at that we even advanced in tier we are now tier four because of all the remaining catholics have actually switched over to orthodoxy now let's uh cleanse heresy in 
in these parts, shall we? Rush B, Rush B. In this case, B is uh, Paris and London. I just realized I didn't convert all nations to Catholicism. We still have a couple of them in uh, the HRE and France because they do hate our guts. But I did improve with most of the HRE nations. Some of them converted, not all of them. It is pretty much uh, vital that you get friendly relations or at least good relations with them before you click that mission, the schism one. And it's better to do it a little bit earlier. So in the next time I'm going to do a Byzantine run, which is likely going to also be within 1.36 patch because I have a few other ideas for Byzantium. I'm going to do a little bit faster expansion. This one, I'll be honest, because of the light goals and because I rushed it because of the light goals, I didn't play as, as, as efficient as I could have. But I feel like uh, we can restore the Roman Empire by 1560, 1570 if we really push it and abuse the Pronoia system. At this point, we're able to have so many freaking wars. It's it's just insane. Like we're essentially at war right now with half of the freaking neighbors that we have and we're still freaking winning every single engagement. I love this Roman Empire run. I absolutely love it right now. Love how the Commonwealth has still not built any forts in between Warsaw and the entirety of their eastern flank. You know, there is this saying that you never ask a woman her weight, a man his uh, wage, and an E4 player how much freaking overextension he has. Um, <laughs> there's gotta be a reason why you don't ask that, right? This particular part of the uh, Byzantine campaign took a little bit longer than I expected it to. I was gonna release it yesterday, but I didn't yet form the Roman Empire, and I thought that you guys deserve that I give you a video in which you see the Roman Empire restored, so you see everything that's uh, happening when you restore the Roman Empire. As such, all we gotta do is clickius Maximus, and boom! New traditions and ambitions. Now, we do get the Roman Empire Tier 1 government reform, which uh, has a lot of culture conversion cost reductions, as well as max absolutism and admin efficiency plus 5, so it's a lot easier to convert and expand. Mm, it's almost as if this nation is tailored for a world conquest with the uh, one faith, mm, isn't it? Isn't it, guys? It does mean we can also do this mission, which requires that we are the Roman Empire, and it's gonna merge the western, southern, eastern flanks, whatever, modifiers into one, as well as it offers even more stuff, and rebel sentiment event will fire rarely, meaning it's kind of pushing us towards um, expanding a lot more. That means we've essentially finished the mission tree for the Byzantines now, and I have to say, I really thoroughly enjoyed this mission tree. It was by far my favorite so far in the campaign, well, in the King of Kings DLC, that is. Also, I gotta say that it is an actual beauty to see the Roman Empire on the map. It's been a while, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the run. If you want us to do the final bit of this, you know what you need to do. And hey, until the next time, check out this awesome Mamelix run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.